Ladies and gentlemen, we have a very interesting motorcycle here in the shop today. This custom V-Rod brought to us by my buddy Connor here. How you doing, man? Doing all right. Glad to be here. Dude, I am thrilled to have this. We've never had anything like this in the shop. This is a... We were talking about this earlier. Beyond categorization, a performance chopper, custom cruiser. What would you call this thing? Yeah, kind of somewhere in that lens. It's like a little bit unpractical, but you know, it still has some, a lot of the performances there. Yeah, so this started life as a 2016 night rod from Harley Davidson, mm -hmm. right? And you took yeah. it to D&D &D, uh, yeah. customizers? D&D Designs, out, D &D of, Designs. Uh, out of Las Vegas, yeah. Okay. Uh, bought it used and then shipped it up to their, those guys there that pretty much all they do is, you know, a lot of the V-Rod work. Yeah, and so they put on this gigantic 23 inch front end, uh, 300 rear section tire, um, a little bit of custom body work, but kind of keeping in line to the original V-Rod, right? Yeah, I kind of wanted to keep it like sleeker. I wanted it to be noticeably customized, but not like absurd over the top Batman style kind of yeah. customized, you know? Yeah, this definitely is, I, I hate to say it, it's like, it is a subtle like show bike, but it, it but is, it, it's, it yeah. could be crazier. Cause you were showing me some that they had like 200 section fronts and 360 section rears, just really zany stuff, low bars. Um, one of the coolest things about this bike that you showed me, and I love you have the remote. I do. Is the air suspension, right? Like yeah. guys, check this out on the fly you can raise and lower this bike. Not while you're riding, of course, because that would be very dangerous, but Connor has a setup here that actually sits underneath, uh, this isn't the gas tank, but actually the air box, canister of air and the whole system over here. So it's actually gonna press the button and we will see in real time. What? <laughs> it's so crazy. And you see the whole geometry of the bike change. We, we literally raised up by a good, maybe three inches of sea height there. I mean, oh, yeah. like a solid amount. And you can definitely feel the difference when you're on it as well. It's like a little bit of a different experience every time you get on until I get it kind of dialed in. Yeah, this this is crazy. Um, Connor, do you mind if I swing a leg over it? Yeah, go for it. I haven't done that yet. And I'm actually really curious. It actually doesn't, oh my God, <laughs> the front wheel. The I, Guys, I'm like back here and I can, I, if I lean all the way back, I can still see the front tire. That is insane. Um, yeah, that was the first thing I noticed too when I when I first rode it, it's like, all I see is wheel. <laughs> I, like, I just see wheel and it's hard not to look at it. You know? Yeah. So foot forward controls, are these the, so this is the stock V-Rod frame. Is this the same mounting peg position from the stock V-Rod? Yes, okay. yeah, it's the same. So the front pegs are set up pretty pretty similar to what was in the factory. They may be offset a little bit with the, the different pegs and stuff that they changed out. Gotcha. But not we're not talking a drastic, like a positioning difference, right? You know what's funny is, so I'm, I'm about 5'11", 165-ish pounds. I fit on almost any motorcycle that I get on, which is awesome, but Harleys, I don't fit on. I mm -hmm. feel like my arms are like literally stretched out. Do you find that when you're on this bike? Uh, oh yeah, yeah, I definitely, yeah. I feel a little a little kind of huckered over, Yeah. No but kidding. I'm also kind of a, a like a shorter guy, you know, like I'm 5'9 when I wake up, <laughs> short little arms. <laughs> when I know? wake up, I like that. Yeah, short little arms, not really leaning as much as I as I used to, so yeah. I definitely feel a little, a little more folded up, but you know, um, definitely more workable than some of the other stuff I've been on. Yeah. You know, for being a 600 something pound motor, 670, you said something like that? It's, it's pushing like 600. I don't 600? know the exact weight on it, okay. man, but yeah. It doesn't feel that heavy, honestly, from side to side. But I honestly think because it's so long, I think the distribution of weight is totally different than any other bike I've been on. Yeah. This is crazy. Um, yeah, I, I really want to get this thing out and ride it and see what it's all about. This is insane, dude. Anything I should know before I take off with it? Uh, not necessarily. It's uh, just really kind of setting your height, you know, of what yeah. you want. And it is happier in the further RPMs. Yeah. It's, it's, not, the, it's not the best putter. You kind of got to kind of get up and go with it. But uh, It's like this throttle cable yeah. never ends. Yeah. It's like, uh. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, it's, it's, it's pretty heavy, so I wouldn't say relying on the back brake as nobody really should all the time. But yeah. it, it, doesn't, it doesn't prefer to stop. Right? Yeah. The back brake is a little bit of an accessory, but you know, working on fixing that. I love that. It doesn't prefer to stop. <laughs> Connor, before I take it out for a spin, tell me what's your favorite thing about it. Why did you, why did you do this? Why did you take a, a perfectly good night rod and turn it into this awesome custom bike? Uh, my main thing is I wanted to kind of like go in between being 
you know, like Harley and sport bike. It's like, can I, ha I have my practical kind of motorcycle, you know, with the SV uh -huh. that I like to ride around and, and put around on. But I really liked the ergonomics and the, like kind of the extreme look of something like this without going like too Harley or too chopper yeah. or something in the middle. I still like kind of like the look of performance and kind of the sleek lines of what a V-Rod looks like. And uh, it just kind of like searched around as a kid. I really thought like the Screaming Eagle and the big drag bikes were really cool. And yeah. it's like, I feel like this is the best like kind of middle ground of that. And what was really nice for me is that I could kind of cherry pick how I wanted it to look. It wasn't something that I could buy off the shelf, but still looked similar and that other people get to relate to. And it's like, oh, that looks like something I've seen. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So kind of recognizable, but. It really has that muscle bike, drag bike look with the big rear tire. Like this is yeah. almost like a cartoonish rear end, you know? Like it feels like yeah. some, some kid drew this, you know? Like it's so sick. And it's cool, it's crazy that they go wider. They're up to like, we're talking about a 360 on the back end That's and I like, turning yeah. this is, is something, but turning a 360 yeah. is like, whew. Yeah. I also love just one final note that you have passenger pegs on here. You should take a passenger on this at some point. That would be awesome. Yeah, we'll work, we'll work towards that. <laughs> <laughs> towards it. All right, folks, I'm going to take it out for a spin. Let's see what it's all about. When it comes to owning something super custom like this Harley Night Rod, I got to believe that the owner of this bike doesn't put on that many miles. It's a one-off, totally bespoke machine that is probably reserved for special occasions. So why would he pay full insurance on a bike that he puts less than a thousand miles a year on? That's where our sponsor Voom Insurance comes into play. Voom is a pay per mile insurer, meaning you only pay for the miles you use. All you have to do is take a photo of your odometer and that's it. No tracking hardware or software, no malicious data collection, Voom is committed to helping riders save money and only pay for what they use. Voom is available in the following states, Texas, Arizona, Colorado, Oklahoma, Missouri, Iowa, Illinois, Wisconsin, Indiana, Ohio, and Tennessee, and it may be available in Alabama by the time this video goes live. If you're a seasonal rider or you have a wild custom bike or maybe even a track bike that sees minimal road miles, you should consider Voom Insurance. Fans of the Yam should click the link below and get a free quote and see how much you can save. Thanks again to Voom Insurance for the support on today's video. Be sure to click the link down below and start saving. Now let's see how this wild custom bike rides. All right, clicking it down into first gear, taking off with it. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, it resists turning so much. Okay, okay, come on, turn baby. It's not that fast, which is good. I don't want it to be fast. <laughs> it really resists turning quite a bit. It's extra, I mean, it doesn't, it should surprise nobody with this rake and a 23 inch front wheel and a 300 section rear tire. It doesn't really want to turn at all, pretty much, um, which is not surprising. Uh, the V-Rod engine's buttery smooth though. It's it's so different from the other Sportster engines because it's 60 degree, liquid cooled. It's there's nothing really quite like it. Go ahead and hang it right here. Grab a gear down. Yeah, we got the turn. Wah. <laughs> Trying to carve that line. It you know it actually does it pretty good. These ergos are freaking bizarre though, dude. It seems like it's kind of does this a little bit while it's coming to a stop. <laughs> yeah, this this is like a video game bike, you know. It's like the it's like the cool custom bike you get as uh, as you level up in the game for some reason. In fact, you know what? It's actually doing all right. <laughs> I really thought that it'd be way more compromised to ride, but this is that kind of like it's it's a performance chopper almost, you know. Again, it kind of oh, over the bumps. Okay, okay. Not too bad. Not too bad. <laughs> I thought it would be worse, honestly. You could actually get along with this thing. I thought it would be basically unrideable. It actually works okay. It's like anything on two wheels. Is, it's trying. As, as long as you don't get the rake uh, completely vertical, or the trail vertical, whatever the, the thing is, as long as the forks don't point straight up and down, bikes want to ride. They want to go straight. They want to be a bike. They want to you know, stay upright. Gosh, I've really... The forwards on this are really weird. 
I don't, I straight up don't fit on most Harleys, and this is no exception. Uh, you're in this taco shape on this thing, and uh, it is really no exception for me to feel this way on a Harley Davidson. I just don't fit on these bikes, man. They're just, it's like they're not designed, maybe they're just not that well designed in terms of the ergonomics. You could honestly, oh, I can put my feet, oh, dude, heck yeah. I can put my feet on the passenger peg. <laughs> <laughs> you get, I guess you could choose if you want super tiny mid-mounted. Now I'm like straight up R1 status. I have this crazy bend in my legs. <laughs> or you can you can go highway style with it. Okay, that's pretty sick. I didn't expect that. Yeah, 1250cc liquid cooled V-twin, 140 horse, not too bad. Throttle tube is very rigid. I can't seem to get it to wide open uh, without cranking on it like crazy. Um, handling the bumps surprisingly well. Uh, I honestly can't believe how this thing is doing. I'm actually really impressed with it. I want to get it up in the revs a little bit. Ooh, yeah! Big honk out of that engine. Whoa! Way nicer than any Sportster engine I've had. You can tell that's refined. That's liquid cooled, baby. That's four valves per cylinder, baby. Thank you, Porsche. Thank you for making this engine. It's a good one. <laughs> Yo, this thing's pretty cool. <laughs> It's definitely a showstopper too. I'm I'm amazed at how it handles. I'm gonna take it out to the twisties. Screw it. If I die, I die. It is what it is. But I, I gotta see what it's like to ride actual twisty roads at this thing. We're definitely gonna gonna grip it and rip it once we got a little bit of opening for the highway. All right. So constant radius here, side of the tire, pretty decent, honestly. Uh, it. I mean. It shouldn't be a surprise with the super long wheelbase. It's very stable on the side of the tire. Uh, it, it resists turning, yes, but once you're there, it feels good. Honestly, got a lot of rev range. This V-Rod motor's freaking sweet, man. This reminds me of the Indian Scout, but just oh, the even more balls. I know you can rev it out pretty good. This motor is actually really happy at about 5,000 RPM, which is right where Sportster engines are kind of giving up the ghost. This feels freaking sweet as, man. Yeah, you want to rev this thing. Get it in the tunnel a little bit. Let's try to get out of this traffic a little bit here, shall we? baby really nice big honk out of this engine Connor was telling me it's been tuned and it's more set up still got a nice pillowy slap of torque down low ah oh, the intake sound is perfect so much less mechanical so much less rattly than a uh, Sportster, this V-Rod engine, super slick. I will say though, when I accelerated, my feet basically came off of the pegs because they're not, they're not like set up to, to accelerate, but I got this little butt shelf in the back, which works pretty great. What a cool custom, man. This thing's, <laughs> this thing's sweet. And then I guess, yeah, you can, you can go on the on the mid mounts and you can just sit on those <laughs> honestly i don't i don't even know if these are passenger pegs or if these are actually like you just kind of sit with these little mid mounted controls cuz i actually feel really comfortable on these mid mounts i just feel like i'm on a really long sport bike <laughs> right, let's grab a couple downshifts let's see how that feels I would get a different throttle tube. This is not really to my liking. I get something with a little bit more movement out of it. I mean, it'll it'll sit at 70, 80 miles per hour, chilling, no problems, loving life, being a V-Rod, or a night rod rather, dying to know what this is gonna be like actually trying to 
scooch it through some corners. Yeah, that's bizarre. It does this thing when you're slowing down, or I don't know why it's, it starts going like that naturally. Um, I've never ridden something with this long of a wheelbase, but it seems to want to do that. Like when you're under under 10 miles an hour, it does this weird little dance. I'm amazed at how well this works though. I never would have thought compromising uh, a motorcycle this much would actually make it work really I mean, it, it's fine. It's doesn't. It's doing the motorcycle thing. Crazy. But folks, I'm gonna get this out on some twisties, and I'll report back. First corner with the uh, V-Rod Custom. A lot of input on the bars to get it to turn, and it it really resists turning quite a bit. And you don't you don't really want to push it much. But I still will a little bit. I'll be very cautious. I don't have the I don't have the brakes. I don't have the confidence. I think we're we're a long way from scraping peg on this, which is cool. He even leaned over as much as we are. I will say a, a stock sportster with the shocks and tires will will probably beat this custom bike in the twisties. However, the fact that I I can ride this with a, some degree of confidence. It's really impressive. This is basically a show bike. You know, it's a custom bike, but it wasn't really designed with, uh, you know, twisty road riding in mind, obviously. But it's, it's a lot better than you think it is. It's still, like I said, it's a big, heavy bike, and it doesn't want to steer, and it's always trying to right itself up. You have to keep applying bar pressure. It's not the kind of bike where it, it just kind of tips over and you just let it fall into the corner. I'll show you here on this right-hander. We'll apply the brakes, try to get some weight into the front. Neutral throttle, and yeah, it, you have to continue pressing on this bar for it to do what it needs to do. Whoa, <laughs> whoa, who's doing some of this? And I think at pace, Sometimes you hit these bumps and there's actually such a distance between the front and the rear wheel that uh, it actually really upsets the chassis and the handling quite a bit. Let's go ahead and drop a gear down here in this tighter left. And yeah, I'm, I'm running real, real nice and judiciously here, you know. Let's flick it over to the right. Oh, that was, that did not feel good. <laughs> <laughs> side to side? Uh-uh, dude. That's not it. Constant radius here. Can open it up a little bit. We'll grab a gear up, let the motor... Well, I keep, you know, it's a Harley, but it's a V-Rod. It wants to rev, man. It's a battle. It's a battle. If you want to fight, you want to fight the twisties, you don't want to cooperate with them, you get this thing. <laughs> but it'll do it. Oh my god, come on, come on guy. Come on my guy. Maybe maybe this was God's way of telling me that I was going way too damn fast on a custom V-Rod with a 23 inch front end and a 300 rear section tire, baby. Maybe that's God's way of slowing me down because I bet you those that, that back section was side to side to side probably would have been tricky on this thing for sure. But honestly, hats off, it, it will do the twisties. I don't know how, but it's still a motorcycle. It's still got rake and trail. It wants to take corners, even if it's a little, you know, you gotta kinda really desire for it to take those corners, but it'll still do it. It'll still do it, folks. And this engine is a real peach, honestly. Uh, really, really like this V-Rod engine, really nice. It reminds me a lot of the Scout motor, and I obviously really like the Scout motor from India, and it's really sick. This is like the polar opposite to a nice race spec bicycle. A big, fat, 300 rear section tire, custom V-Rod. I love it. Let's crank on it a little bit. Ah, look at that! That's a nice smattering of torque and power. I like that. 
All right, I think now we need to get it on the highway a little bit. I, I want to see if I can do a little bit of an acceleration test on this thing, because I guarantee you it's probably got grip for days with, uh, with this rear section tire. So let's see if we can get that done. Jumping on the highway here, trying to see its manners, kind of going at that 70 miles per hour or so. And I also wanted to see some acceleration out of this thing a little bit too, if we can get light. Um, I will say there is a tremendous amount of heat coming off of the right-hand side of this engine where the exhaust headers are. Um, if you're crawling at about 10 miles per hour or stopped, you kind of have to put your leg way off to the side over here. Once you're in motion, it's okay because the wind kind of deflects that heat away from you a little bit. But man, if you're going slow, whew, it gets hot. Hot, hot, hot. Let's see if we'll have the opportunity to do a little uh, acceleration on this. Ooh, that gets hot, boys. Sheesh. All right. Let's grip it and rip it. Pretty good. For a bike like this, that's pretty impressive. The thing is, it weighs so much, and it's, you know, quote unquote, only making 140 horsepower. So, 140 horsepower with like 670 pounds of weight. Uh, you know, I would I would estimate this is between an MT-07 and an MT-09. It's definitely faster than a 650, no doubt, but it's not as fast as a, a modern middleweight naked bike, uh, Triumph Street Triple 765 or MT-09 or Duke, Duke 890. Uh, this thing, this thing won't be able to hang in a straight line. But that doesn't mean it's slow. It's definitely not. I mean, it's got some balls, and I mean. The quality and character of the engine is fantastic. Uh, really, really nice. Really nice. I like that feeling a lot. And grab, uh, what is that, fifth gear? Sixth gear? Yeah, we're in sixth gear there. Top gear. And uh, yeah, you can absolutely do the highway cruising thing. Get your feet back on the mid-mounted pegs. And I'm way more comfortable. <laughs> just sit cruising like a little I feel like a, a duck or a monk or something I'm just like in this little pocket with my feet curled it's nice man I feel like I'm on a bath and I'm just kind of sitting there <laughs> I might only have five gears I can't remember if I just went down six that might have been fifth gear um, holy moly the heat off of the engines crazy uh, you've really got to really got to be careful I would never ride this with shorts let me put it that way because even wearing these riding pants I feel like uh, it's so freaking hot man let's see if it has six gears I think it's only five second third fourth fifth five gears yeah so it's not six gears it's a five-speed box that's why the gears feel a teensy bit long I would say it's kind of spaced out I'm shocked at how this thing is working. Shocked. I, I did not expect this at all. I did not think that we <laughs> did not think we'd get this kind of handling and performance out of a bike that looks like this. Um, very impressive. Very cool, man. Honestly, the fact that you can have a show-stopping bike like this and you can ride it around is really neat. A lot of those giant wheel custom choppers are borderline unrideable if not completely unrideable. Whereas this thing, you you absolutely can ride this. You can take it to a coffee shop, take it to a show, I guess, go out to date night on it. It does have a seat and pegs, so you could take someone out on it, I guess. It'd be fun to show somebody that. What a freaking roar this motor has, though. I don't even care that it doesn't perform like an MT-09 or a Duke 890. Uh, what a honk that this engine has. Just a nice little creamy, velvety smooth power delivery too. Uh, really nice. I mean, look at that. Just super nice, man. Super, super nice.
Well, folks, I think that's going to wrap up my review and first ride impression on this performance chopper. Uh, let me know what you think down below. Thanks again to Voom for sponsoring today's video. We truly do appreciate it. And uh, we will catch you guys in the next one. See you later. <laughs> I just, I can't keep watching you hurt yourself like this. You're out here doing fat supercharged wheelies on your H2s, doing stupid nooners on your Groms. If you just watched Yammy Noob right here, you keep watching it, you could save yourself from this. I can't keep watching you hurt yourself. I just can't. I can't keep, I can't do it anymore. Please keep watching Yammy Noob. I want you to hurt yourself, please.